everyone, welcome back to my channel. It's Els, of course, and it has been a minute since I have not been on a football pitch, making a fool of myself, trying to get onto Soccer Aid. Squeeze <laughs> So I thought I would do a quick catch up video because, you know, life has been lifing and I miss you guys. I miss just sitting down in my flat, the good old days. So I asked you guys to ask me some questions. I did a quick that was TikTok. I asked you guys to send him some questions on Instagram. I said maybe like ask me about my life, but also I really wanna give advice because I get questions a lot in terms of like, how do I start a YouTube or a podcast or get into presenting? So we're gonna get into a few of the questions. The first one is how do you create content for different platforms? Like what is the best for each one? So I'm guessing this means like YouTube or Twitch, TikTok, Instagram, Twitter, all of them. To be honest, I get overwhelmed. There's so many different platforms to keep up on. Instagram is for my story, my day-to-day -day life and some pictures when I'm feeling nice. Twitter is mainly just for me to talk shit. TikTok, I'm not the most consistent on TikTok, but I will put some stuff up every now and again. YouTube, the OGs, YouTube is for long form videos, but I do do shorts now. So if you've been checking out my shorts, watching them, thank you very much. Someone has said, is H dating Amelia? And he came on my radio show on Kiss recently and I actually asked him, are you guys dating? And he said, yes. So make of that what you will. Is it real though? One sec, my front door, I've got, <laughs> I have a parcel being delivered. Just let them in. Els, what would you say are your best traits? What are my best traits? I do my worst traits quite easily. My best traits are I am very driven. I get up, I have my routine, and if I want something, then I'll work hard for it. So I guess that is a positive trait. I am very independent, which you could view negative and positive. I view it as positive. I pay my own rent, I live by myself, I do everything myself, I run my own business. I like to think that I'm quite sentimental, so if I give gifts, I don't care about buying something really expensive. I'll either like make something or I'll pick up on little things that they love. Just in everyday conversation, I'll be like, okay, I'm gonna remember that for when I need to get you a present. Oh, this is a good one. If there was one thing you want to change about your life now, what would it be? Definitely work-life balance. I enjoy what I do a lot, but I wish I had more, more time to just turn my phone off and just enjoy life, which is one of my resolutions was to go on holiday, but it's nearly the end of March now and I've not actually taken time off, so that's good. Other than that, it's like, I think I, I appreciate everything that I have right now. What advice would you give to someone wanting to get into the presenting industry? And there's quite a few of these. A lot of people have asked, how do you find a niche? Firstly, do something that you love and be yourself. Don't try and imitate what other people are doing. Don't look at other people's videos or other people presenting and just be like, okay, I need to talk like this and I need to do exactly what they're doing because it doesn't really make you unique. Always bring some of your personality to whatever you're doing and people hopefully will love you for it. But I think it's definitely best to find a niche of what do you love and how can you is there a gap in the market that you can break into? And for me, I noticed, well, I wanted to do presenting, but I also wanted to do YouTube and I love video games. And I noticed that there wasn't a lot of people that were doing presenting and video games and love makeup and hair and sport and just like kind of like all these things. So I was like, okay, that is me. That's my niche. I'm just gonna go into that little part of the market and then I'll grow from that way. And that's kind of what I did. But above all other pieces of advice, people say, how is best to get into YouTube and, and things like that? Just record yourself and start. Literally with YouTube, it's like, how do I get into it? Just record a video and put it online and keep putting it online. A lot of people get apprehensive about it. And the best, literally the best thing to do is just start. At least you've made the start. And presenting wise is just use social media to show you talking on camera and people hopefully will see it. People are always watching. Don't give up after like a month or two because I think a lot of people see others doing well and think it's gonna happen overnight and it actually doesn't. You have to keep being consistent and sticking at it even though sometimes it feels like it's going nowhere. Next one is what, oh, you got my heartstrings here. What are you watching on TV at the moment? Okay, what programs have I been watching? I've been watching The Wire. Oh, 
I've just got through season two of The Wire. They have all the series on Sky and everyone told me when I first started watching The Wire, season two, you have to just get through it. Get through season two and then the rest of the seasons are amazing. So I'm enjoying The Wire. I just finished watching the Janet Jackson documentary, which is on Sky Documentaries, which is really, really good. Like, I love any music documentary. Movie wise, and the last time I spoke about what, what movies I've been watching, I just finished all of the Harry Potter movies. <laughs> I just finished actually watching a movie which is part of the Sky Cinema Club thing that I'm doing this year. So I get early access to a lot of the Sky exclusive movies that are going on to Sky throughout the year. I think they upload one every week or one every few weeks. And I just finished watching North Hollywood, which was produced actually by Pharrell Williams, who is one of my favorite music producers ever. So I never saw him making a movie, but I'm really into it. It's got Vince Vaughn in it. And it's basically all about a high school kid that is trying to figure out what they want to do with their life. And it's all about the struggle between what your parents or people around you envision you doing versus your dreams and what you actually want to do. And I relate so much because I was one of those kids that didn't know what they wanted to do and just went along with the plan that my parents or whoever else had and went to uni and got a job. And then when I eventually got the job, I was just like, do you know what? This isn't for me. So I took that leap of faith, quit my job, started YouTube, here we are. So this is why I connected so much with this movie. I think that it's really one of those ones that a lot of us can relate to in terms of going against the grain and really chasing our dreams. <laughs> In the movie, one of his friends going to college, the other one is gonna go straight into work. And he loves skateboarding. And that's kind of like his dream, I guess. So if you have a chance, go and check out North Hollywood. It's a Sky original and it's gonna be on Sky from March the 13th. So it'll be out now by the time you're watching this. And as I said, Sky are uploading one original movie per week for 2022. I'll put all the links in the description for the movies that are out in March. Right, next question. Someone said, how is the Man City job? Oh, honestly, it's just, I started in December. I started presenting for Manchester City uh, as one of their match day live presenters. I've had the most fun experiences up at the Etihad presenting in the middle of the stadium at halftime, hosting the fan zones outside. And then a few weeks ago, I actually went to Dubai for one day to host the Manchester Derby out there. Oh my God, I just love it so much. And I'm really excited to see where it takes me. So absolutely loving that. What has been your favorite experience at work so far? I'm gonna pick a recent one from this year. It has to be the Super Bowl. Me, Chunks, Philly and Harry Pinero went out to LA with the brand. That halftime show, I think it's genuinely the best thing I've ever seen live. I didn't cry, but I just had a sudden overwhelming feeling of just like, how am I here? How am I out here working? But again, to experience something so incredible and I'll always remember it. I actually have, let me just get this. I don't collect much sort of memorabilia from things, but I kept the lights that we had to have around our neck during the halftime show at the Super Bowl. And then I have the passes from when we went and I'm just gonna keep them. Like when I'm older, I'm gonna show them to my kids. Me like I went to the Super Bowl halftime show in California with Dr. Dre. Eminem, Snoop Dogg, 50 Cent, all of them. Honestly, the best things I've seen. Someone else said, did you catch any basketball games whilst you were out in America? And yes, I actually extended my trip by one day because I saw that the Clippers were playing the Golden State Warriors because I needed to see Steph Curry shoot three pointers and I'd never been to an NBA game before. So I was just like, well, I'm here. I might as well. And it just happened to be Valentine's Day and we see someone get proposed to on the court, must be nice. And then the halftime show was Mario, the singer. He was saying, you should let me love you. This was all in the same 24 hour period of <laughs> seeing the Super Bowl. Next question is a touchy subject and I've very well documented this on Twitter and Instagram. Someone said, what's your car update? So this is the infamous car that I ordered back in July, 2021 and it was supposed to arrive in November and it's now nearly the end of March and I still don't have the car. They're saying April, I now think it's gonna be May. If I ever get this car, you will know about it because I'll be shouting it from the rooftops. I'll be so happy, honestly. Oh, this is a really good one, actually. How has your life changed since C19, I'm gonna say. I don't like saying the word 
first started. So since lockdown, I would say my life actually has changed so much because just before lockdown is when that Sidemen Tinder video came out and that really helped my socials grow, like my YouTube and my Instagram, etc. And because lockdown happened, I had a lot more free time because the presenting stuff that I was doing in person obviously got canceled. And that is my favorite era of my YouTube channel so far. That's when I was doing all the Amigo videos with everyone. I was doing the YouTuber Sim series. And that's when me and Ethan started doing the baking videos. I feel like that so far for me is my best YouTube era. And it's just because I had so much time. And then obviously because the, the platform kept growing, when we started to come out the other side of lockdown, I was then picking up all the presenting stuff. Oh, I like this one. Okay, so they've said best advice for a newbie editor that would love to work with YouTubers. Firstly, keep an eye out because I always see big YouTubers or just like, any YouTuber asking for editors, everyone always needs an editor. For some reason, there isn't enough going around. So it's definitely a good market to get into. So keep an eye out for all of that. But when people ask, oh, just e email and edit to this email address, make sure you have examples ready, I would say. If you have your own YouTube channel, then put examples of your edits on that. I think it's a good way to showcase kind of your skills. There's nothing wrong with dropping an email. If you can find an email, of a creator's management or email them directly, then you might get lucky on the off chance that they might be looking for an editor, but don't give up. I think persistence is key. And if you can go to events like Summer in the City, that is in the, the summer, obviously. Just try and meet as many other creators and YouTubers as possible. Work with up and coming YouTubers as well. I think that's definitely a good way to build your network. What do I study to get a life of luxury, travel and fun? And then they put in brackets, basically your job. Even though everything online it looks like all of your favorite creators are having the best time, which I'm, I'm assuming if you get to experience fun things, they are. Social media is such a little portion of someone's life and we all tend to show the best part of it. But what you don't see is when you've got so many different things that you need to get done in one day or the nerves behind, you know, the nerves and the pressure behind going out and doing live TV and having an earpiece in where five different people are talking to you at the same time, yet you still need to hold a conversation and listen to what the person in front of you is saying, as well as being in a stadium packed full of people who are also listening and watching you and making sure that you're performing under pressure. The mental side of it is a lot in terms of you get tired, like it's very, very tiring. So I'm not gonna sit here and say, yeah, it's all great. Like if you wanna study, you can be like me and travel the world and all this stuff, which is great. All the fun stuff that you see is the perk of the hard work and the doubt, self-doubt and the, the sleepless nights and the just bullshit of some stuff that goes into everything. And I think like with most jobs and mo school and anything we do, there's good parts and there's also bad parts. And I think that as creators, sometimes maybe we need to show the negative side of things just so that people don't think it's easy. Like it's not easy to do any type of work. Okay, I'll do a few more. This is one I don't know how to answer. Someone said recommendations or tips on how to relax. <laughs> I need, that is a question that I need answering. So if anyone knows any tips on how to relax, let me know in the comments, cause I don't. Have you thought about getting any pets, Els? I want a Doberman so badly. Like I look at them online all the time. They are my favorite. However, I live on my own in London <laughs> in an apartment. And I think it's just not the ideal environment for a very active, quite a big dog. Excluding the Etihad, which is the best football stadium you've been to and why? I'm gonna say the Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, the new one. It's incredible. Like it's, mass it's massive. And how they can just part, it's like Moses parted the sea and the whole football pitch just disappears and then there's an, an, an ah, and then there's an American football pitch. It's crazy, it, like it's really, really impressive stadium. Oh, okay, there's so many of these. There's so many. Are you dating anyone questions? How are you single? It's honestly mind blowing to me. How are you single? Do you fancy men? There's so many questions like that. I am a loner. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't leave my house unless it's for work. So make of that what you will. One of my resolutions is to go on a date this year. 
So, yeah. And on that note, it's been real. It's been great catching up with you guys. I hope you've enjoyed just chilling and me answering some questions. I hope you, if you had any questions, I was able to answer them or you learned something from, I'm not gonna say it was advice, but it was just my opinion on some stuff. So I hope you learned something and yeah. Thank you so much for watching. Peace out. We'll see you next time. Love you guys. Bye-bye.